In 1999, scientists discovered a hidden celestial body about 130 light years from Earth, TRAPPIST-1, a red dwarf star. In reality, the scientists who made this discovery weren't even aware of how lucky they were. In fact, it wasn't until 17 years later that telescopes were able to reveal the planets around the star. Today, it is the most studied planetary system outside our own solar system. The seven planets in the system are rocky, and in terms of mass and size, they are surprisingly similar to our planet. Additionally, some of them might even have more water than Earth. We know that scientists have been working hard for a long time to study distant planets. In fact, many things have changed since the James Webb Space Telescope began operating, and some things that once seemed impossible are now considered possible. After all, can the TRAPPIST-1 system support life? Or could we live on one of the planets in this system? The James Webb Space Telescope was designed to study the early periods of the universe, when galaxies and stars began to form. But what really makes the telescope special is its ability to analyze the atmospheres of exoplanets. The telescope's near-infrared spectrometer and mid-infrared spectrometer can measure a different light spectrum emitted by distant celestial bodies. This helps scientists determine the composition and temperature of the planets and their atmospheres. Moreover, the James Webb has a powerful infrared camera capable of seeing beyond the thick cloud layers of exoplanets and helping us study the geology of those celestial bodies. TRAPPIST-1 is a red dwarf star of type M, the most active star we know, emitting strong explosions several times a day. To study the atmosphere of an exoplanet, observing the light passing through it is essential, but the stellar radiation generated by the explosions of a red dwarf makes this difficult. Despite this, the James Webb Space Telescope is far more powerful than any other telescope that has ever existed. To give you an idea of the device's sensitivity to detect brightness fluctuations, we can use an analogy. It can observe 10,000 light bulbs and identify when four of them go out. So, what has the telescope discovered so far about the TRAPPIST-1 system? Recent observations indicate that the closest planet to the star in the TRAPPIST-1 system has a very thin atmosphere, or perhaps none at all, and is probably just a chunk of bare rock. This planet, called TRAPPIST-1b, is a rocky world with scorching temperatures. With a surface temperature of 446 degrees Fahrenheit, it closely resembles Mercury from our solar system, meaning it is outside the habitable zone. Further out, we see another planet orbiting the red dwarf, TRAPPIST-1c. In the past, it was thought that this second planet in the TRAPPIST-1 system resembled Venus. However, Data from the James Webb Space Telescope revealed that scientists were mistaken. The planet does not have a dense atmosphere like Venus. Therefore, the temperatures on the daylight side of this planet are around 224 degrees Fahrenheit. Still, TRAPPIST-1c is considered the coldest rocky planet discovered using this new observation method. So, is it possible to find water under the harsh conditions of these planets? Although water may have existed on these hot lands in the past, it likely evaporated long ago. However, new research suggests that other planets in the system could have remained cool enough to retain water in liquid or frozen form. The first of these planets is TRAPPIST-1d. TRAPPIST-1d has about 30% of Earth's mass and approximately 180% of its radius. Due to its small mass, the planet likely doesn't have a dense atmosphere or heavy elements. However, it shares similarities with Earth in terms of the amount of light it receives from its star. Located near the inner edge of the habitable zone, the temperature of TRAPPIST-1d would be around 48 degrees Fahrenheit if it had no atmosphere. For comparison, without the greenhouse effect, Earth's surface temperature would be about 0.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Still, the most exciting feature of this planet is that it could contain 250 times more water than Earth. Even so, the habitability of the planet remains uncertain. There is one factor that could change this, the albedo, the measure of how reflective a surface is. Albedo indicates how much of the solar radiation that reaches a surface is reflected back into space, rather than being absorbed. The albedo value ranges from zero to one. Zero means all radiation is absorbed by a black surface, and one means all radiation is reflected by a white surface. Earth's average albedo is 0.3. So, 
If TRAPPIST-1 has similar values, it could create conditions conducive to life forms, as water vapor acts as a greenhouse gas. However, planets with an albedo similar to Earth's could avoid an uncontrolled greenhouse effect. Scientists believe that TRAPPIST-1D could be covered by a global ocean. However, for life to develop in this ocean, a tidal heat flow 20 times stronger than Earth's would be needed. This tidal heat flow is a special form of energy generated by gravitational interactions with nearby celestial bodies. On TRAPPIST-1D, this energy would serve as geothermal heat, sustaining chemical reactions in the ocean. Additionally, some types of life on Earth obtain their energy not through photosynthesis, but through chemosynthesis. This means TRAPPIST-1 could harbor unique forms of life that do not rely on sunlight. If the planet has a thin atmosphere, the twilight region, the line between day and night, could also be habitable. The fourth planet in the system, TRAPPIST-1e, is the most promising. This celestial body is dense and highly rocky, with a composition similar to Earth's. Located in the habitable zone of its star, TRAPPIST-1e, could have a thick atmosphere rich in oxygen, and being very light, it may have lost all its hydrogen. This is good news in terms of greenhouse gases. If TRAPPIST-1e contains more water than Earth and is capable of maintaining it on its surface, it would have a climate very similar to ours. In fact, TRAPPIST-1e is considered the most Earth-like planet among the celestial bodies discovered so far. However, imagine living on a planet where the year lasts the same amount of time as a day on Earth, and the concepts of day and night are completely different. Due to the proximity to its star, all seven planets in the TRAPPIST-1 system are tidally locked, meaning one side of each planet always faces the star. This would result in a sky that is constantly reddish, with an eternal sunset or sunrise. Additionally, on the other six planets in the system, the sky would be visible. On the other hand, scientists believe the planet could have terrain suitable for human development. However, we must note that the climate would be drastically different. According to estimates, the thick storm clouds that cover large areas of the planet would create massive dust storms and strong hurricanes, generating a heat flow that would distribute the heat and maintain the necessary temperature for the development of complex ecosystems. This means that even nighttime exploration would face extremely challenging conditions. That region would feature a landscape dominated by cold and large glaciers, which could represent a major challenge for humanity. Still, this factor could become an advantage for the first colonizers of the planet. In the distant past, our ancestors used ever-changing constellations for navigation. In the case of TRAPPIST-1e, the system's central star could function as a polar star, always fixed in the sky, guiding us through the unexplored regions of the planet. Red dwarf stars of the M-type in our galaxy are 10 times more common than stars like our Sun. And as such, these small red dwarfs are considered possible cradles of life, where life could develop. However, as mentioned earlier, despite generally being dim, their luminosity can suddenly increase dramatically. On the other hand, some scientists believe that the eruptions in the TRAPPIST-1 star could be beneficial for life on nearby planets. These eruptions emit large amounts of energy, and this energy could initiate the formation of important molecules, such as amino acids, which are fundamental building blocks for life. Therefore, the high energy radiation from the eruptions could sterilize a planet's surface and destroy its atmosphere, but it could also provide the necessary energy for the development of primordial life forms. Furthermore, data indicates that the TRAPPIST-1 star is relatively safe, with its eruptions being about 30 times weaker than those seen in other red dwarfs. However, since the seven planets in the system are very close to each other, the effects of the eruptions may be noticeable. This also means that the auroras on TRAPPIST-1 would be very different. Although we are advanced beings, our bodies are still very fragile. Therefore, weak but frequent solar flares could represent a constant threat to our health. The auroras on TRAPPIST-1 would allow us to detect the flashes of light coming from those eruptions. In other words, if we were on that planet, we would need a thicker ozone layer and a stronger magnetic field to survive. Additionally, we would need to develop our technology to protect ourselves from solar events. In fact, we could survive on that planet by building special shelters equipped with protective materials and advanced life support systems to shield us during periods of intense space radiation. 
On the other hand, since the gravity of the planet would be about 193% of Earth's gravity, movement there wouldn't be very different from what we experience on our planet. However, as previously mentioned, when solar flares hit the planet, if we couldn't find a safe place to take shelter, our blood vessels could contract, impairing blood circulation and potentially causing serious health issues. Furthermore, excessive exposure to stellar radiation could damage the DNA in our cells, affecting the normal rate of cellular production. As a result, this could lead to mutations or abnormal cell growth. The vegetation on this world, dominated by darkness, is also a great mystery. Starlight reaches the planet's surface at a low angle, which may create shadows and limit plant growth. To overcome this, one idea could be to use a concept similar to the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, where plants would be suspended on multi-level platforms to receive sunlight from different directions. If there were local vegetation on the planet, it would likely have evolved to be completely black in order to absorb more sunlight. Therefore, cultivating plants wouldn't require significant effort. Another idea is that some plant species could evolve into bioluminescent organisms, generating their own light to compensate for the lack of natural light. This adaptation would allow them to grow for longer periods and survive better in the darkness. TRAPPIST 1F, which is relatively far from its parent star, receives only about one third of the sunlight that reaches Earth, making the planet much colder. In other words, if TRAPPIST 1F had no atmosphere, its surface temperature would be around minus 74 degrees Fahrenheit. And if there were water on this planet, it would certainly be frozen. The same goes for the two most distant planets, TRAPPIST 1G and TRAPPIST 1H. Although data indicates these planets are rich in water, it is believed their surfaces are covered in ice. However, since TRAPPIST 1G has a mass about 20% greater than Earth's, it could potentially retain its atmosphere. Therefore, if the planet were able to maintain a heat distribution layer and had active volcanism that provided the greenhouse gases needed to sustain an atmosphere, we could be talking about an aquatic world. Or perhaps the planet has an underground ocean filled with exotic life forms. Scientists estimate that, if this were possible, there could be an ocean as deep as 416 miles on that planet. For comparison, the average depth of Earth's oceans is around 2.3 miles. Observing TRAPPIST 1H, the most distant of the seven planets in the system, we see that it is not heavily affected by stellar radiation. In fact, if it were in our solar system, it would be located between Mars and Jupiter. The surface temperature of TRAPPIST 1H is estimated to be around minus 148 degrees Fahrenheit. TRAPPIST-1 is a star that has been cooling for 7.6 billion years. Therefore, all of these planets have undergone extreme conditions in the past due to intense heat, which could have caused water to evaporate into space and the accumulation of dense atmospheres. When solar winds impact these planets, water can be dispersed into space. However, astronomers are using updated data to create more precise models of their atmospheres. In the past, it was believed that a star's heat dissipated from a planet's surface through convection, with hot air rising and cold air sinking. But scientists have discovered that celestial bodies are more complex and that atmospheric gases behave differently at various altitudes. Recent research suggests that the planets of TRAPPIST-1 may not have heated up enough to melt their mantles and crusts. This means that, even after the star's cooling, large amounts of water could still be trapped within the rocks of these planets. However, the current conditions on these planets are likely inhospitable. On the other hand, red dwarf stars are known for their extraordinary longevity. The TRAPPIST-1 planets still have billions, perhaps even trillions, of years of evolution ahead. Who knows, maybe one day, these now hostile worlds, whether scorching hot or completely frozen, could harbor life and become habitable environments. In the coming years, the James Webb Space Telescope will bring us more information about these Earth-like planets. And what do you think? Could there be life on any of these planets? Share your thoughts in the comments. See you in the next video.